Good day, sir. Are you there? <laughs> Am I pronouncing your name right, Yaron Brock? Yaron Brook. Yaron Brook. Sorry hey. about that. That's okay. I'm uh, used to it. Thanks for coming on the show. You were in New York recently. We didn't get to have you on then. Yeah, no, sorry, I missed you guys. Now, uh, the Trump presidency for you. Uh, d d now, the thing I find funny about libertarians is they weren't really on board before the election, and now I feel like they're kind of happy with the way things went a little bit. Well, maybe some libertarians. I, you know, the way things went was going to be bad either way. So, when I, you know, I'm not happy with the way things went, but I couldn't have been happy with the way things went. If Hillary would have been elected, I would have been just as depressed. But no, I, I don't think I don't think Trump's good for America. I don't think the fact that he got elected is a good sign about uh, where the American people are. Uh, and um, I, I think we're in for for some hard times. Really, like what? Well, I mean, partially it's who knows, right? Uh, the guy the guy's completely unpredictable, and it's hard to tell what he's actually going to do and what he actually stands for. He. He is unprincipled. He, he, he doesn't know what a principle is. He's got a list of concrete issues that he's going to cover. So part, part of the issue is a, a huge uncertainty. We, we just don't know. But if he follows up on things like uh, limiting immigration and uh, with Jeff Sessions as uh, attorney general, I believe he's going to follow up on that. In particular, limiting H-1B visas, limiting illegal immigration. That's a disaster for this country, particularly for Silicon Valley, where most of the production in this country actually happens, where most of the wealth is actually being created. Uh, if he follows up on trade, I mean, that's an unmitigated disaster. Trade uh, to, to raise tariffs on Mexico and China and Japan and all these other countries would lower the standard of uh, living of Americans significantly. So well, wait a minute, wait a minute. With the H-1Bs, I think everyone talks about major CEOs and, the, you know, the guys behind Google and YouTube and they... They focus on those guys. But when I think of H-1Bs, I think of Disney employees having to train the Indians who are going to be taking their jobs. There's a whole sort of well, middle class. One, you've got one example of this, which has been blown out of all proportion. Yeah, there's some Indians who can come in and do a much better, much more productive job, which means that we get a better product at the end of the day. Uh, but look. They are massive numbers of, of engineers in Silicon Valley and at Disney and all over the country who came in on H-1Bs and are working hard and are producing and are creating and are adding real value in this country. And the idea of demonizing productive people who actually have a job in this country are working when we have a massive shortage of engineers. We don't train enough American engineers in this country. That's just a fact. So what we want to do is cripple production in America cripple the one thing we're good at, which is high tech, in the name of not allowing Indian engineers into this country? That would be a massive mistake. What and, about and, and, this this uh, argument that we need not, we've given up on factory workers, the idea of someone just going ka-chunk, ka-chunk, we're never gonna have that back. Well, we're never gonna have that because technology has replaced it. You know, we produce more stuff today than ever in American history. We produce more than double what we produced when we had uh, a gazillion of, of uh, people doing ka-chunk, right? The reason we've lost many factory jobs has nothing to do with China, has everything to do with technology. The jobs are never coming back. Just like in agriculture, 90% of people used to be in agriculture. Today, it's less than 1% of the population producing much more food. That's great. That means we're more productive. The same is happening in manufacturing. We're going to have less people producing more stuff Cool. That's wonderful. That raises all of our standard of living. Right. But what about the fancy stuff, like uh, high-tech manufacturing, airplane parts, yeah. pharmaceuticals? There's some things, the high IQ stuff, really, that yeah. we're good at manufacturing ourselves, the ball bearings yeah. for the 747's grapple yeah. grummet. But we're particularly good at manufacturing that because we've always had an immigration policy that's allowed the smartest people, the most able people in the world to come here. Uh, a significant number of startups, or I think over 50% of startups in Silicon Valley, have at least one immigrant as a founder. That's what we want to limit. We want to limit the number of new companies that are created in the U.S. that hire Americans and foreigners. And anyway, we're all immigrants, so who cares? Oh, come on, but that's a, such a cliche. Are. Well, I'm an immigrant. I don't know how many generation, how many generations you go by, back. Zero. I moved here in '99. 
There you go. So we all all immigrants. So so let's embrace that fact. Immigrants are wonderful. They add to this country if we insist that they assimilate. So what we should be focused on is on the evil of multiculturalism. We should be focused on the evil of the idea that they should preserve their culture and their culture is just as good as ours. And instead, and it's a focus on dismantling multiculturalism and allow immigrants who can find a job here, who can pick apples when Americans won't pick apples, who can work in Silicon Valley when we don't have enough engineers in Silicon Valley, to actually work here. Look, three quarters of PhDs and MAs in technology and in uh, sciences are given in American universities to foreigners. And then we kick them out of the country. That is nuts. We're subsidizing their education, and then we're telling them to go somewhere else to create jobs. But don't millions of them just stay yeah. illegally? No. I mean, millions of, of low-skilled immigrants stay illegally because they have nowhere else to go. But the, the high-tech guys, the, the high IQ guys, as you present it, they leave. They go back to China. They go back to Scandinavia where they can do okay. But if we let them stay, they would be creating their new companies. They would be creating the new jobs here in America. I understand what you're saying, but the, we're dealing with such intense numbers that assimilation becomes impossible. Oh, with 50 million ridiculous. illegals, you have these sanctuary cities where you can go up. Even Puerto Ricans here in New York, they can go to Spanish schools and never learn how to write English properly. But, but again, so let's work on assimilation. Let's work but on you the can't fact assimilate when the numbers speaking. of that magnitude are so high that no, you can just have an entire Mexican city in America that gets federal funding. But that was the same of every immigrant, every immigrant wave. In the 19th century, we assimilated into this country massive numbers of people far, far exceeding. But it was culturally anything. encouraged back then. Now it's culturally discouraged. Well, but that's the fight. Let's fight on the culture about encouraging assimilation instead of putting up walls. Walls are, are, are a sign of defeat. It's a sign that we've given up on our culture. It's a sign that we can't convince people anymore to assimilate, so we're building a wall to prevent them from coming in. In the 19th century, we absorbed, as a percentage of the population, far, far more people than anything close to what we're absorbing today. And yeah, there were little Jewish cities in New York, and there were little Polish cities in New York, and little, they were. And they went away with it. They spoke theory. English, though, and they had, in sanctuary cities, they have city hall meetings where everyone is speaking Spanish. They try Same to change the laws Yiddish. in these towns and make drunk driving legal. In the south side of New York, Yiddish used to be the second language in New Yorkers. Come on, the same thing happens with every wave of immigration. And, you know, the question is, do we insist that the second generation gets assimilated? And that's a cultural fight worth fighting. But to, to become anti-immigrant, to build walls, is a defeatist, anti-American type of position, which I think is incredibly harmful, both to ourselves and to future generations. When you're talking about the Yiddish and the Italians, we're talking about numbers that are assimilable. When we're talking about 50 oh, the million illegals, were much larger than today. Much larger than today. Look, look at the history books. We had 50 million population. versus 380 million, or whatever the population is. That's a much massive larger. percentage. Much higher percentage in those days than today. Much higher. Well, they, uh, they the sure did a much better job know. of assimilating quickly. We only, it only took one generation. Now we have these people that yeah. become less assimilated. We have yeah, Muslims that are more likely to be radical than their parents. That's right, because we don't put any effort into assimilation. We don't challenge Islamic radicalism. We haven't blown them up into smithereens to show them what happens when you mess with America. We, we've uh, treated them with kick gloves. So yeah, so you see more radicalization on the Islamic in the Islamic okay, world. Okay, why don't we get a president that says something really patriotic, like I don't know, "Make America Great Again," for example? Yeah, because it's an empty slogan. You could say any any empty slogan. Uh, uh, you know, uh, John McCain said, "A uh, country first, America first. It doesn't matter. These are empty words unless you fill them with content. And to to run a campaign, "Make America Great Again," by building a wall. That is a sign of American defeatism, of American... No, of it's American, American preservism. You're preserving no, it, means, it. Will it you at least afraid. agree that illegal immigration has to stop? It means we're afraid of assimilating new people. It means we're afraid yes. of setting up a proper legal Im immigration system. We're not confident enough in our culture Correct. to be able to assimilate these people. But Correct. that's sad. That's a sign of okay. defeatism. In the 19th century, we weren't afraid. We said... Bring everybody, come here. If you're poor or whatever, come here. 
we are so confident in America that we'll assimilate you, we'll take care of you, don't worry at all. Yeah, we no we've stuck a little state. American flags in their hands. Henry Ford put them in a fake machine where they would come out the other side holding little American flags. If, yeah, if we, you don't think illegal aliens are a problem now at 50 million or 30 million or whatever it is, when is the number too high for illegal are aliens? Illegal immigrants are there? There's about 30 to 50 million. That's complete garbage. It's nonsense. That's nonsense. Okay. There's 10 to 20 million illegal immigrants in this country, and the number has shrunk over the last eight years. No, the number the stopped crisis, expanding at the same pace it was expanding in. The number 12 million goes back to 10 years ago. Because, 10, because it hasn't grown in 10 years. Yes, it during has. The it has not. These people during have the, children. During the financial crisis, immigrants, those illegal immigrants left because there were no construction jobs. They were the guys building all the homes here in California. And when the construction jobs dried up, they went back to Mexico. You know, again, this is this is not these are not facts that you guys are disseminating. Oh, they're facts, all right. Oh no, there's no there's no thirty to fifty million dollar number out there that is being measured or or actually. And Coulter know, in Adios America beautifully lays out why it's at least thirty million. But let's just say it's twelve. Yep. Uh, when is too many? A hundred million? I don't know. I, have you ever have you ever flown over this country? It's empty. We should be encouraging. We should be encouraging more people to come here, not less. You want a higher standard of living, more production, more Americans building stuff and creating stuff. The greater the population, the better we all are. I mean, the problem in Europe today and in Japan is they have shrinking populations uh, because they have no kids. America barely is growing if we don't include immigrants. We want a growing population, and immigrants are part of that. Now, it should be legal, but that's that's we need we need better legal immigration laws that allow for more people to come here legally. So it should be legal, so we should sure. stop illegal immigration, and we should sure. encourage assimilation, so we need Donald Trump in office because he's a true patriot. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that Donald Trump will not do any of those things. I, he won't wait, build a wall. You're he cutting out. Illegal. We're getting a bad out. signal. Yeah, I only no heard the uh, no illegals, and Trump is a great president. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> it's getting fuzzy. It's getting fuzzy. See, that's why I have to get guys in here who can debate smarty pants, because I'm dumb. Uh, but I do definitely think that uh, we're up to 30 million illegals, and you can't assimilate when the numbers are too high. But as far as should we cut H-1Bs and stuff, it's kind of out of my league. I know that Indians are taking uh, tons of jobs in tech. What percentage of those jobs we could handle on our own? Too hard, too mathy.